Hey, what's up, Steve Ron here. Today I want to share with you a process I am quite excited about. This is a photo I've been wanting to paint for a while now. And look at my paper. No sketch, no drawing. What I'm doing here is seeing how far I can take a painting with no pencil lines in a, as direct of an approach as you can, really, um, and bring it to a point of completion or near completion. Now, throughout this video, I am ending up adding details after everything dried but my goal is if i can get like 90 percent of the painting if not a hundred percent done in one go now one thing i noticed is the first thing many people will will consider here is how do i know where to paint if i don't have a sketch now if you do know how to somewhat draw well from uh, observation this is the same thing because you're just drawing with the paint you're drawing the shapes and you're still looking at proportions i'm looking okay this wall goes down here then diagonally then down again and then there's steps the advantage of this approach, and again, I'm not doing it for that advantage, that's kind of where naturally my experimentation led me, is that I can focus on the given shape I'm working on in a very clean, clear, pure manner, very focused, because I'm not thinking about how this shape connects to others. Now my entire attention is devoted to this shape, right? So I place down a wash that is kind of a gray purple, uh, and now I'm taking my time. I'm seeing, okay, uh, where do I need to darken it? Where do I need to shift the colors while it's still wet? It lacked a bit of a neutral neutralism, I guess, in the top, so I added a bit of warmth to it. My goal is, because the, the walls of this building, and it's a lovely scene, I love it, and I'm gonna paint it again for sure. Because the walls are so yellow and beautiful, I wanted to contrast it with a bit of purple. Uh, now look at what I'm doing here, because I am going to start painting those walls directly. Again, this is where you'll consider, okay, so what happens when the edges touch? What I find is it's a non-issue, really, as long as you are familiar with how the paint behaves. So what you can do is actually paint two shapes, one next to another, have them touch, and still blend the way you want, as long as you know what you're doing. Now, my technique here is not perfect because it's not about technique. It's about that approach of painting it directly as I see it and the beauty it leads to and how much you can focus on a given shape, one given shape at a time. So you will see some blending, but I want to almost challenge your um, uh, perception or opinion even of what is possible with watercolor or what is acceptable as a process. Because this is something I have shown before, but many people have not seen it before. And I think it works wonderfully well. Now, you don't have to cover the entire page like this. You can, wherever you see a hard edge, just pause. I don't have to now paint the rest of the walls. I can just work on this section until I'm happy and then continue on. But to me, I really want to test out the the idea of how much I can take this, how far I can just continue with the details here. So right now I can still focus on the entire shape that is wet um, because everything is still wet. So I'm going to darken it just a bit because it feels a little darker than what you're seeing here. Uh, it has to contrast really well with the walls here. Um, but the idea is, and I just love this kind of a thing, I have a couple of processes that hopefully I'll share with you in the future. One of them is actually exclusive, so I won't be able to share it with you. I made it for a magazine, but uh, if you're in that magazine, you will see it. I'll, I'll update you on that in the future, but the process is like, mwah, it's exactly that, what you see here. And everything looks beautiful. And what I like most about this process, it has this wet look. So if you've seen, if you've seen my car painting that I mentioned um that I've shown in a couple of live streams too, and I posted here, this wet look, that's how I achieve it. That's how I do it um, at the moment. You know, I may change my technique, but look at how, okay? So we do have the building and the background, and they're still separated to some extent. Even though I painted the two scenes, the two shapes wet together, they're still separated. Um, whenever I do these in, in my Frustration Free Watercolor course, I will talk about that a little more later, um, I do show like, um, and I also showed it here, freedom sessions where you're just using the paint and seeing what it does without a goal of a finished painting in mind. That's where a lot of these experimentation um, can really help you just to understand on a very visceral, intuitive level what happens before it happens. Uh, so I know how to maintain that separation between the yellow and the purple, even though it's two wet shapes one next to another. You can do quite a lot with watercolor this way. Um, 
and I'm fairly excited about this. I'm gonna try and take this wash as far as I can, continuing to do wet in wet, continuing to add details to even lift if necessary. Uh, but I think it's a really, really cool process. Um, so once again, I'm trying to sharpen that edge. Now, there are many ways of doing it. It's not about the exact how to, uh, it's more about the process that you enjoy. You could lift to create a hard edge. You could do a lot of things. You could tilt the paper. It's not. Re it's never really a question of the technique. It's more of a question of what would be the best expression of the vision you're trying to achieve. It's not always obvious, right? That's part of the experimentation. You do it this a couple of times, you understand. Okay, when I do this, it works this way. When I do that, it works that way. And I think this is a great opportunity to show you how I'm doing a process I'm not really familiar with. I'm not familiar with painting this way. I've done maybe five, six paintings this way compared to the, the normal, more common way. So it's still relatively new to me. Um, I'm looking at the overall shape. So the left side uh, is beginning to be a little um, darker, mostly lower left corner is darker, but it's also still warm. Most of this painting is quite warm. The only non-warm areas are the background that is a little more neutral, but even then it's not really cool per se, it's more, uh, more of a neutral. Again, if you have everything be warm and then a part that is gray, the gray is gonna look cool. Now, to add some interest, especially to the windows, I did wanna add a bit of blueness to it. Now, when I looked at this scene from afar squinting my eyes, you see that sign there, it's green. I like that feeling, so I thought to myself, I'm gonna place somewhere around there a bit of a coolness factor just to contrast a bit with the warmth. So that's me inventing, it's not there really. The whole scene, if you look at the photo, it's warm. Um, so just to clarify that. And I'm continuing, I'm continuing while the paint is wet. Now, I don't know if you caught this, but there are some drops here, that's because I sprayed. I am spraying this throughout the process to keep things fresh. And one thing I did learn from this is if I go more than one, two sprays maximum, you do run the risk of um, wetting it too much and having all the darkness and edges fade a little too much. So that's one more thing I never even thought of while doing it. I just thought, okay, I'm preserving the, the, the wash for a little longer because that's what I'm used to do with one shape. But here, because everything is mixed together, it is important uh, to be aware that when you spray, it's gonna loosen up all the edges. So all the edges you worked hard to make a separation on, it will loosen them again. Something to be aware of. Actually, it's a good insight. I'm happy I, I now remembered it. Um, and now I'm building in that shadow here um, to the left side. Again, keeping with the motif or motif of purple and yellow um, because I really like the way these two colors contrast. I find that um, very often these shadows on very warm walls of buildings, um, they are actually a little purple and that's the color that, that people sometimes they look for and it's very hard to mix. And But when you know what it looks like, you'll be able to mix it much, much more easily, let's say. Now, one thing I wanna make sure that I don't miss is that bottom section needs to be quite dark. So you will see me uh, kind of revisiting it and, and going darker there. Um, there's this window. A lot of it is about the timing. Again, something that is really built with time and intuitively, it doesn't need to take a long time to improve that aspect, um, but it does take experimentation so that you get to the point where you know what the timing is. And I'm still not there perfectly. Um, you've seen me do the sky in the previous painting process I shared with you, uh, and I got the, the, the timing quite well. Uh, when it's a, a, a localized thing and it's just a small shape, uh, within a larger shape, I'm pretty adept at getting the timing. Just like if I just have to match a color, I'm adept at matching a color. But when it comes to painting a whole thing like that, mixing the right color and getting the right timing, it's a little harder. Uh, I would say a person who I've seen who paints similar to this is Chiang Chung Wei. He, the way he... Um, there's a reason why his scenes end up looking uh, wet because he's really good at that. He'll build a wash very slowly and meticulously while maintaining the the soft edges pretty much anywhere. And it's almost like he decides, okay, this is where I'm gonna have a hard edge. And it's a very a matter of, he can just decide on it and have it happen. Um, and the rest blurs in really nicely. So it's interesting. One more thing I really like about this approach is it does tend to have a very abstractized 
look to the painting. Um, and that's something I'm quite after. If I can nail that, you know, when you, when you, even when you look at it really up close, it looks very fluid and very abstract. But just from afar, it looks hyper realistic. Even that's that's what I would aim for. Hyper realistic meaning you can't really separate it from a photo if you look at it from afar. If you're across the room and it's on the wall, it looks hyper realistic. You'll be like, that could be a photography. Um, I'm using a tissue here to really make some sharper uh, hard edges. So that's another thing. You know, it's not a technique I watched someone do. It's just a result of trying it out. I have seen people do it, obviously. Um, but but that's not really the thing that spurred me to do it. It was more like, I need a hard edge. How can I do that? Dry the paint, put in the piece of paper there. Um, here I sprayed once again. So you have to be careful with these things because it will let you work longer, but it does. You see how it spreads everything out, the windows included. Um, now, if you're in into that kind of a thing or you're after that specific effect, it's perfect for you. Um, but if you're not, it's just something to be aware of. Now, there are a lot of interesting... Um, small shapes of light and shadow in the windows that convey that it's windows with doors that open. Uh, I actually did another attempt of this scene where I got them to look a little closer to the photo. Here I found it more challenging. Uh, it's something that um, would probably be best left for a later wash. So I'm going with a very symbolic approach here. Um, and then if I decide later on I want to add some details or I want to change something up, I will. But for now, if you just take a few steps back from the scene, it looks like something, right? It looks like there's uh, this element of the light, the building and the walls. Then there's a bit of darkness on the background and on the left side. And that's the kind of look I'm after. Could be done better and with a bit more finesse and control. But that's exactly the thing I'm trying to learn from this process. Uh, and I do feel much more prepared for the next one. Um, now, to many, already just working this way may look really tough and challenging. Um, I would say it's not really about a challenging technique. It's more about just putting your impression on to the paper while not really even being concerned about the timing. Because um, I could paint the same way, but slower. It would still look good. You see a lot of painters that work this way. And you'll notice how there's a beginning. The feeling of light and shadow really is enhanced now. Um, again, it's all blurry, right? But if you take a few steps back now, especially the walls to the right side of the building, it, it's already there, like the impression is there. Um, of course, it's going to dry much more muted because now it's everything is super wet on paper. The colors still look very vibrant. By the way, I know I'm going to be asked about uh, this brush, which I don't remember what it is, but I'm going to have to... Let me get it, actually. So... This was a brush I picked up on Amazon. I actually don't even have a description for it, but I can send you the link. I'll try if I remember to put a link. Sorry about that. Otherwise, I'll never remember. Sorry for the raw kind of uh, narration here, but I, there's, there's no way I'll remember if I don't write it down. Now, things are still wet, but I'm going to go ahead and try it out. This is, I think, where I made the first um, critical mistake in terms of timing. I came in with... Um, way too wet paint and kind of re reawakened everything there it's not really a big mistake it didn't have huge impact on the end result but that's just me not really figuring out like how wet the uh the paper is and how much i should have either waited by the way or just come back with very very thick paint uh, but that's fine it actually won't have a huge impact on the final result the thing i look at right now and i really enjoy is just how loose everything is and wet but you can still tell where the wall is and where there's light and shadow and all of that good stuff and i will take a break to let you know that this video is sponsored by my frustration free watercolor course if you're trying to paint this way to be loose to be free you just yearn for that freedom uh, that's the course i designed specifically to answer that question because i find once you have that freedom you'll be able to pretty much paint whatever you want according to your vision with a great sense of freedom and from there the technique can be enhanced so be sure to check that out it covers a lot of different painting processes and also a lot of uh, approaches and exercises for letting go getting looser and being able to just paint more loosely whatever it is you want whether it's still life portraits a bunch of other examples it does cover basic techniques so if you're a beginner 
it's aimed towards you. It's a beginner to intermediate who want to be set free kind of a level. So I hope you'll give it a go. Link in the description box below. If you have, I do want to thank you so, so much and consider checking out the watercolor realism course instead. Now back to the process. So yeah, what I love about this stage, as I mentioned, it's just that it, you can tell what you're looking at to some extent. The more I can preserve that feeling of the person can tell what they're looking at, the more excited I get. Now there's a bit of a kind of plan there or whatever, so I'm putting it in uh, wet and wet. One thing that I do re did learn with time is colors like lemon yellow in this example are a little more opaque and they work well wet and wet. You wanna paint foliage, that yellow translates really well to foliage and it does show in a wet and wet context. So. Um, uh, that's the kind, that's my kind of go-to in these specific scenarios where you have a plant against the shadow and you do it wet and wet. Um, and you can, of course, enhance it later on in the next wash. <coughs> now, the ground here is actually quite an important bit of the entire um, scene. The reason is it's going to provide some kind of a contrast as well with the building. So the building itself is very light and dark and kind of contrasty. You want to make sure the ground reflects where the shadows are. Right now, the ground is kind of detached from all of that. Uh, but as soon as I start adding that, those, um, I'm going to add the sidewalks pattern, red and white. But then as soon as I start adding the overarching purpley violet dark shapes, it's going to anchor the building even more. Now, some of the ground is in the light as well. So you don't want to miss that. You still want to show that. Um, but but for the most part, look at this beautiful, just kind of one st stroke alongside the bottom and the shadow on the, the curve, it's the curve or not the curve, the, the sidewalk itself and the street. There's a shadow on the sidewalk itself as well. The entire street is darker though. Um, I am indicating some random people here. Honestly, if you want to get the people down perfectly, where I'm at right now, I'll probably have to let it dry um, and then work wet on dry because I'm just not adept at putting in so many complex shapes without a drawing. Um, it's okay when it's an overall scene and I can work on the impression, but the people in this kind of a scene are uh, reduced to just random, not random, but reduced to more abstract shapes, even more abstract than, than some different type of process. Here's uh, red, same thing, pyro scarlet, a bit more of an opaque paint to show where the traffic lights red is. I'm gonna add the, the, the pole itself uh, as well. And I'll add some highlights to it later on. Uh, to anchor it more. Uh, but the idea is, I think if at some point, if you really want to capture the small details, depending on your abilities and your skills, um, you may be able to do that. Um, but it's not necessarily uh, going to be uh, the easiest thing to do. Um, so I'm just now kind of um, delegating the people to the overall impression of a person who's uh, looking at this from afar. Uh, there is no use to to do the whole th scene in impressionistically and loosely and then try and paint the people hyper-realistically. I see no point in that. Again, unless I'll let it dry and then I figure out it's something that's missing. And I may still do that. I have the painting here. I can edit it if I want to. But right now, just that lovely um, impression is there. It's beginning to happen. Um, still very loose. This is very abstract impressionistic feel. I aim for more of a realistic feel. I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. This is not the final look I aim for. It is the look I achieved here. So I'm working with what I achieved. Uh, and hopefully I can continue sharpening that axe and, and getting to a point where it's good. Now look at the wall up top there. That's definitely something I'm going to need to smoothen out. The way it dried unevenly. Um, this shadow is really important because we want to separate again the wall that's exposed to the light and the 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 ground. Want to make that separation between them. Now the light has shifted a bit, so the colors look a little more faded. Excuse me for that. Um, now I'm gonna select a few shadows where I feel like their edges could be sharpened to improve the, the enhance the impression. And this is one of them, the shadow on the, to the left of that uh, wall and underneath it. Um, I'm not gonna probably go over the background at this point, uh, but I do want to sharpen out some of the shadows within the building, if that makes sense. But again, the really, um, I don't want to say hard part, but the loose and kind of free part is almost done here. I am going to use a similar approach here. I'm still mixing uh, a lot of shapes together, letting them touch, letting them mingle and change. 
But for the most part, that whole first wash where everything is wet and everything mixes together, which some would consider the more challenging part, is done. Uh, so what you're seeing now is just uh, optimization of the impression. This shadow has a bit of a more gray feel to it the more it moves away from its source. So I kind of added a bit of blue to that mix. Again, these are just optimizations. The painting to me is almost done, if I'm being honest, and it works. Um, the question is now, can I make it better? And th that's usually my approach with um, just generally <coughs> uh, painting and knowing when to stop, because that's something I'm asked about sometimes. It's not really about knowing when to stop. It's a matter of, do I have anything else to add to the story that I'm telling with the painting? Very often, I won't, so I stop. Uh, very often, I look at it, and I'm, I don't know what else, what details I'm going to add anymore. So if I don't know, it's done. Sometimes I'll let it dry for a day, declare it done, but then maybe change my mind later. Um, and sometimes I'll feel like I need more details and more details and more. And I'll just add them while I feel like they are, they're still necessary. But as soon as they're not, I'm done, you know. Uh, now I'm warming it up there. I don't know why I felt like the, the shadows here were a little warmer under that beautiful, beautiful balcony. That's a wonderful uh, building and, and a wonderful time of day. I feel like this is a scene I kind of want to chase and achieve the perfection I, I'm looking for with. I'm pretty definite I'm going to paint at least one or two more versions of it, kind of like I did with the um, uh, fruits and vegetables painting that I did like seven iterations of until it felt just right. Um, these things, due to the nature of watercolor, uh, are a little random, but it doesn't matter because if you do one attempt, you have a chance of nailing it. If you do seven attempts, you'll probably nail one of them it will look like what you envisioned. And I'm at a point where my vision is so much more developed than my uh, experience and skill. So I'm seeing all of my mistakes even more. I'm seeing all of uh, my, the things where I wasn't able to achieve what I was visualizing. I see a lot of that much more easily. So it's an interesting place to be in. Uh, let me tell you for sure. Um, something that happens once in a while, but I'm at a point where I'm really happy with my experimentation. So uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'd much rather do this than paint the same thing over and over again and never uh, develop anymore, you know, because I do feel some people can get in a routine and then they're done. That's what they're, they'll paint for all eternity, never trying a different process, never trying to optimize it. Not for the sake of, uh, you know, becoming better. I don't find a lot of motivation in becoming better. It's that chase after a painting that is perfect. Here's the line I told you all smooth. It's that chase after a painting that looks just you know, you wonder how the heck anyone was able to capture that beauty. That's what I'm after. Um, and I find that this process is a lot more satisfying sometimes than the very slow and meticulous and realistic process, which sometimes I'm in the mood for, no doubt about that. Uh, now I'm doing the same thing for the windows. That's where not all of them, but for some selectively, I would like to bring out a bit more uh, of a prominence and boldness to them. They'll feel anchored, right? Um, the heart of this painting is still going to be quite loose. Um, there are, there's going to be a variety of soft edges, which again, I love. That's a part of the beauty of watercolor. Here I am adding some blue to there. But for the most part, that's to mimic a window pane, by the way. Uh, but for the most part, this is, um, yeah, it's going to be super loose. Uh, and then some areas are going to get a bit more attention, like that balcony, like that window, like the shadow under the window in the balcony. Um, and it's a very uh, gentle process I'm in right now. You know, I, I'm taking my time. I have no hurry. I'm, I'm adding where I feel like I need to add. Like there's a lot of people there with white shirts, uh, light kind of uh, shining on them. So I'm adding these, you know, blue details there to mimic the white in the shadow. Um, <coughs> I'm adding all the, these small details. Again, the people are relegated here to just being a part of the scene really. Now, if you look closely, everything is still kind of needs warming up. Not the windows that I deliberately made cooler for the impression, but the walls themselves could be warmer. So I'm kind of covering them with a thin, thin glaze. You can see my entire color setup in the description box below uh, for this particular palette I'm using. My colors are very basic. The only thing that's a little different recently in the latest uh, month or two is I'm using more cobalt blue instead of... Uh, French Ultramarine and Thalo. I'm using more cobalt. I find that it looks better to my taste and I'll probably continue using it over other colors. I know cobalt is 
basically crap for the environment and everything else. Maybe I'll find a good alternative. I don't know. If anyone knows one, let me know. Um, like a fake cobalt, I'd love to try it out. Um, but yeah, so uh, a few more of these details under the balcony. Looking at it now, I didn't even have to add these. This looked good without it too. Look at the beautiful effect on the windows there on the left with the blue, the top, top left with the blue there, how it's spread out. I don't know, I love these kinds of things. That's the that's the cool thing about watercolor. You can get a painting full of these effects that still um, looks very realistic from afar. And you can get that with other media, but with watercolor, that's the only part where, you know, all of these random cauliflowers can uh, end up being something that just looks insanely beautiful and unique. Um, so, yeah. Now, there are these poles there separating the road, uh, the street from the sidewalk. Uh, I'm adding highlights to them. I'm going to add highlights to the side as well um, to show where the light is shining from. <coughs> now that I think about it, I got the cast shadows in the wrong direction, by the way, because the light comes from the right. Oh, man, I screwed it up. I didn't even notice. I cast the shadows to the right. You'll see it later on, but whatever. Uh, I'm adding some highlights to that. Uh, to that. Um, uh, I don't know. What, what do you call these? I forgot. Like a uh, street light, I guess, whatever. It's not a, light, a traffic light. Uh, so I've added a highlights to its right and top because the light comes from top and right mostly, kind of, I would say. Um, and some highlights here and there for good measure. Really just kind of feeling my way through it, looking at it, seeing a highlight, putting it somewhere in the proximity. Again, this is not science. This is art. I'm, I'm not really scientifically putting these where I know they belong and where I measured necessarily. You know, even if my uh, painting is accurate, if my sketch, sorry, is accurate, now, uh, the painting stage tends to not be a science. By the way, you'll notice that my walls are more uh, neutral in their color, whereas they should be a little more warm. I'm going to make that happen soon. I'm going to strengthen them as well. But for now, we're adding these random details around the windows. Just being careful not to overdo it. Um, again, I don't have to be careful. I don't. I don't like the idea of being careful while I paint. I find that that takes away my freedom. So... If I'm being totally frank, I'm not careful here. I'm just focused. Uh, I have to work on my terminology to make sure I uh, express to you the process as it is. You know, there's no effort involved here. It's not work. Um, I'm not doing work here, even though I call it work or piece of art or whatever. It's not work. It's play. Uh, to me, it's play. Uh, and I find that it's not a recommendation, but I find that when I treat something as play, uh, I t look at this beautiful diagonal random shadow. Um, I tend to get the the thing I'm after when I treat it as play much more frequently. Um, here's that red again, Pyrrol Scarlet, Daniel Smith, putting it on the traffic light. Um, now I'm adding the white side to the top of the curb because um, there's a bit of a lighter white there. I'm using the white gel pen. Sometimes I'll just do that uh, to add a few details and I use my hand to kind of blend it around to make it not too, let's say, uh, um, linear. Now I'm adding the shadow to the wrong side because the light comes from the right and I added a cast shadows casting to the right which is ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous that it still works and looks good because you can kind of relate the shadows to different objects. It's a random abstract pattern. As long as it's uh, horizontal it looks good. But yeah, that's funny. Uh, now here's a mix. Uh, I added a bit of my orange there. It's cadmium light, whatever. Cadmium orange light and a bit of the pyro scarlet actually just to make it warmer. Increase the temperature contrast between that and the background that is more purple. Um, and I'm going to repeat this probably one more time. We'll see how this dries. But like, again, if you take a few steps back, you'll find that right in front of your eyes, an impression was created. Um, and that moment, and I'm going to address this in, in some other videos, but that moment where the impression is starting to show there for you, the artist, that's when you're good. That's when you can ride that wave and make it look good. I think a lot of people run into trouble when um, they are painting something and they're not seeing it themselves. And it takes sometimes time to see it yourself. You, it doesn't click, right? But at some point it clicks and it starts to look realistic and then bam, you get it. By the way, sorry for the everything looking more muted. It's just later. The light is much worse than it was before and that, that shows you the difference. But I'll show you the final scan and you'll see. The one thing I am doing is I did decide to sharpen that edge as well. That edge with the, the main building. Uh, thought it would be the right move. So I'm darkening the background. It's less 
in order to darken the background and more in order to create a hard edge with the building. Sometimes I'll do that kind of a thing, not in order to make a darker value, but to um, improve an edge. That's also something that can happen, you know. Again, I'm completely agnostic to all of these things, uh, to a process. I'm just doing the thing that will serve me. Um, I felt the same thing for the shadow under the balcony there, but I'm going to keep it relatively uh, loose and easygoing. See, I'm blending it with some water. I don't want to. I don't want to create something that extreme here. Um, could I do the same approach, by the way, with a sketch? Yes, I could, and and paint. Um, you know, paint the thing directly and and merge everything together with a sketch. Yes, it's possible. Uh, by the way, because some may ask it, you know, test it out. If you encounter a process or come by a process that works for you. Don't listen to me. Uh, I'll, I'll again anything that I tell you to do because that's how it's done is false. That's just how it works. The only truth is the thing you discover yourself that works for you. Um, so do that. That's the the key to me. That's the key to not only painting something you love, you're absolutely in love with, but also something that was your pleasure all throughout the process. It never involved work, as I mentioned. It never involved effort. I'd be lying to you. You know, I work hard on the business, right? I work hard on posting videos like this one and uh, posts even. their hard work and the podcast and all of that. That's work to an extent, but it all revolves around something I'm fascinated with and I enjoy. So, And painting is not work. Uh, unless you have a deadline and you have to get a bunch of paintings ready, that may be a bit of work. But not really. But in any case, here's the end result. I'm going to show it to you also from even closer just so you can see all the details. Then we're going to zoom back out. I do want to thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to give you that quick, quick reminder. If you can uh, check out uh, the Frustration Free Watercolor course, link in the description box below. Finally, let go. Enjoy the painting process. Get the results you're after. 2024. Now's the time. It was the time in 2023 too. I don't really believe in uh, New Year resolutions. Just believe in doing whatever you love uh, in the path of least resistance, quite honestly. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. You're amazing. Thank you so, so much. I posted a sneak peek into the uh, 100 Cars book. So if you're there, be sure to check that out. Uh, and there are a couple of exclusive processes over there as well. And if you want to receive credits at the end of the videos, all you have to do is just become a patron for whatever amount. It doesn't even matter to put a dollar in. Still cool. I think you can. I mean, maybe it's impossible. I don't know. Uh, whatever on Patreon side, there are limitations, but I think it's possible. In any case, I'm rambling. I will see you in the next video. Take care.